Okay, that should be all the images we need. Today's the final day of Dunksy's fantastic adventures. Let's go find Fermine at his camp. Let's head back and check with Lapine Pauline. Maybe she'll have an update for us. Charlotte? What could she want with Lapine Pauline? Pretty please with the cherry on top, Charlotte. Journalist extraordinaire. Please tell me you're joking. I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be. I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of Begdom. Okay, okay. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Sounds like the report Lapine Pauline read in the Steambird wasn't in the news section after all. Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't gonna get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red crown finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it and investing so much Mora for nothing. <laughs> Uh-oh. So Lapine Pauline's whole research project is based on a fictional story? Which means we're not gonna get a big bonus after all. But more importantly, she's gonna lose everything she's invested. Traveler! Paimon! You're back! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She told me about your collaboration. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. I unfortunately had to dash her hopes, and I'm afraid all your hard work was in vain too. She's desperately trying to find a way to rescue the project and get you the Mora you're due. I've tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting, and the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. Wait, Miss Lapine Pauline? What are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamech, head to the Opera at Bicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. 
Whoa! There's no need to go that far. I mean, come on. Look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamix armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up with the Maison Gordianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? <laughs> 270,000 Mora. Okay, well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces, and now I'm just a small-time engineer. I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> my life is over. Don't despair, Miss Lapine Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection. It's really quite something. You said you designed it specifically for high fidelity image capture and analysis, yes? The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. Really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it! If this is true, then I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline. My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards! Oh, maybe I should consider taking out another loan. That way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry. Oh, come on! Stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute. Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes. There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. There's no time to lose. I need to get to work. Early bird gets the worm. Uh, can you believe her? She just ran off. Paimon's pretty sure our vice went in one ear and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. But don't you worry. I'm gonna write an article on all this and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Actually, you know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. No bonus, no biggie. This makes everything worth it. You're welcome. I got something out of this, too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. 
Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future. A blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Hello, Paimon. Hello, Traveler. Is the crown ready? Yes. We're just waiting for Zuria now. She hasn't arrived yet. Then let's wait for her a little while. Or actually, maybe we can go find her. It's not too far from here anyway. Didn't she say she just lives on the hill over there? Hey, Traveler, Paimon. Oh, and speaking of... Found you two at long last. Uh, I'm so glad that you both are all right. Huh? Why are you here, Miss Delaroche? And what could have happened to us? What could have happened? That water imp Thelxie, of course. After I gave you that commission the other day, I began to get worried and went asking about the boy that went missing. Oh, that? We've got it all figured out now. The boy you heard about was just Framine. Even the missing fish was his fault. Don't worry, we'll help you get the fish back as soon as we're done with this job. Oh, sorry about that. I've been diving in the area recently. Huh? What, Framine? Diving? No, 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 that's not what happened at all. I've heard a completely different account. What I was told is that about a month ago, a child tied a bunch of heavy seashells onto his body and walked into this open stretch of water. He never came back. What could that be if not that water imp's work? Uh, are, are, are you sure? One hundred percent sure. I've confirmed the account with several veteran fishermen I know. The child was only eight years old. His name was Lesco. Lesco Destray. Wait, Lesco Destray? Yeah, that's the name. They say the family took on the name after moving to the city from a place called Stray. Anyway, his mother is a pretty famous art dealer, while his father passed away from an accident many years ago. Oh, well, naturally, his mother was devastated by the incident and fell terribly ill. It's said that she left the court of Fontaine, and no one knows where she's gone. It... it, it can't be, right? Lesko Destre? Zuria Destre? It, it, it must be some sort of a coincidence? I'm sorry, miss. We've got to go check on something right now. 
Oh, I see. Well, you go on ahead. I just came to make sure that you're both all right. I'll head back then. Uh, please remember to take care. Who are you? I have a patient here who needs quiet bed rest. Please leave us be unless you have anything urgent to report. This is the residence of Zuria Destree, and I am Jala Khan, her family doctor. What did you mean by your question just now? Who else could be my patient? Your patient should be Zuria's son, right? She told us herself that her son had contracted loneliness syndrome. No, you're right. Young Master Lascaux did have that illness once upon a time, but he's... Well, the young master's no longer with us. And now, the Madame has come down with the same illness. Are you... her friends, by any chance? Oh... So... When she had requested time to go out over the past few days, it was so she could spend them with you. So if I'm understanding this right, the one who's suffering from uncontrollable delusions is the Madame herself? She believes her son is still alive? That is correct. When the young master disappeared, she was organizing an art exhibit that she had specifically prepared for him. But since she had to leave the house, she was unable to see her son one last time. That might have been the trigger for her regret. Or perhaps the family's fall into loneliness and grief was inevitable as soon as the old master passed away. First the son, and then the mother. But how could that be? She really looked like she had a handle on everything. Her smile was so lovely, and she even told us to stay optimistic. But you're saying she... Those actions are proof that she can no longer differentiate between fantasy and reality. Then all the other things that she told us about her son, were those fake too? No, those were all real. Although they were all things that happened before the young master left us for good. Madame's time has just never moved forward since his passing. I see. So after her son left, she created a fantasy world where her son was still with her. She was looking for a way to cure his illness when she ran into us. She has been in a good mood the past few days, even humming a song when she returned from her stroll. She even began discussing with me the idea of using deliberate guidance to ease the illness. It was all going well, until last night. She spent a whole night staring at the shell the young master left behind, and the words that he had inscribed onto it. Then she broke down once more. I prescribed some sedatives and... She's currently resting. But... but then what should we do? How can we help her? There has to be something we can do! Don't panic, Paimon. Even though this is a devastating piece of news, we must all calm down first. What should we do? I need to think. I need to remember the old house of the hearth, and the children who lived in it. Those patients, and what their doctors said back then. Hmm. Ah, uh, what if... 
Dr. Jalacon, have you seen a picture book? The Madame should have brought it back with her. Hmm. Are you thinking about trying the guidance therapy she talked to me about before? Well, it's worth a shot. I'll go get the book. Yes, this is it. That's right. If what Dr. Jean Lacan said was true, the past few days have been very helpful to Zuria. So we should complete this journey. We need to show her that her child has found a happy ending in the world of her dreams. But... but wouldn't that just make it harder for her to accept reality? One must first face reality before accepting it. The Madame has been crushed by her feelings of grief and can no longer bring herself to face reality. Our first priority would be to get her out of this state. Right. Before today, I had thought she wanted to use Thelxi's fantastic adventures to save her son. But now, I think she might need it to save herself. And if we could complete it, we should be able to give her some feeling of inspiration and closure. Maybe those feelings would be enough to give her some courage to face reality again. There's no time to waste. Let's set off right away. We're here again. This is the final part of Thelxi's journey, but the most important person is missing. Everyone, please don't be so down and gloomy. Remember what she told us? If we were to feel troubled, the patient would become anxious as well. <sighs> You're right. Paimon needs to smile. If we have to give something to Zuria, it should be our smiles. We have to keep smiling as we finish this adventure. And then she'll be able to recover, right everyone? Yeah, I'm sure she will. Oh! Be careful, brave adventurers! Here comes the evil monster that stole the crown! Watch out, everyone! They're coming at us again! There's no need to fear! Prince Silk looks stronger than ever today! He must be going all out! Coming to all! So many times! Tora, bring refuge! Take two! This is the final enemy, right? We'll reclaim the crown for you now, your highness! Manifest! Do your master's bidding! Let the world collide! My apologies!
I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I made a promise to my friends, and I'm already very late. But, Madame, you're still... Don't try to stop me. Today's the most important day for treating Thelxie. We'll use the guidance method. Didn't you also say that you'd think it'd work? I'm not trying to stop you, Madame. It's just... <sighs> could you tell me the name of your child? Dr. Jalakan, how can you forget the name of your own patient? His name is Thalxi. He's the Prince of the Kingdom of Water Imps. We will go today to reclaim his crown and attend his coronation ceremony. I see. Madame, please rest assured, everything is still on schedule. Your friends have already departed to find... Wait, look, they've already returned. Paimon, everyone, have you really? Yes, but the coronation ceremony still hasn't taken place, because we felt like you should be the one to preside over it. Wonderful, how wonderful! Thelxi, my child, my child, are you hearing this? Everything you lost will now come back to you, and soon, very soon, you will never be lonely again. And the last page of the picture book. It's still waiting for you to illustrate in color. Right. The picture book. The picture book. But I don't know what I should put on the last page. Don't worry. Thuxi and his friends all know what she got on it. Get ready, Zuria. We'll describe everything for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> At last! and his friends were able to drive off the final invading monsters and achieve a dashing victory. Their success was complete, and the recovered crown resplendent. The water imps, finally returning to their homes, showered the prince with love and applause as he greeted them. They once again offered their precious shells to the prince and reconstructed the rainbow bridge of old. As he watched the scene unfold, the prince could not help but be touched by its beauty. Moved by everyone's happiness, the prince stepped onto the Rainbow Bridge and took a good look at all the friends who had gone on the journey with him. There stood the Traveler, Goddess Paimon, Fremine, and... Huh? Where's the last person? The prince looked frantically around, but could not find the person he wanted to see most. At that moment, the person suddenly appeared on the other side of the bridge. She walked towards him with a smile and slowly lifted her veil. The prince could not hold back his tears. He recognized then that the mysterious person that had been by his side the whole time was none other than his mother. Surya walked across the bridge and placed the crown above the prince's head. She smiled down upon him as she said, My prince, my king, you shall never, ever need to feel lonely again. That's the end of the story, Surya. Thank you. Thank you all. I am so sorry, my child. Maman should have spent more time with you. Did you hear the story? You'll never have to feel lonely again. <laughs> Maman loves you too. What's happening? Is Zuria talking to Thelxi? Quick! Put on my diving helmet! There's a transcription module in it that's compatible with Thelxi's output signals. You should be able to use it to understand what Thelxi's saying.
Mama, Mama loves you too. But I love you more, Mamo. What? Did you see something? Mamo, I'm getting a little sleepy. If it's time for bed, can you hum a lullaby to me again? Of course, my dearest child. As long as you want to hear it, Mamo will always hum for you. Kingdom of Water Imps in peace. <sighs> My poor darling. <laughs> Please don't forget. I will always love you. My love is <sighs> greater than the entire distance between here and the Kingdom of Water Imps. <laughs> I won't forget, Mamon. And so is my love for you. Greater than the entire distance between here and the Kingdom of Water Imps. Good night, Mamon. Traveler, Paimon, you're here. Frimine, why did you call us in such a hurry? Did you hear something from Zuria? Oh, if it's not good news, Paimon doesn't want to hear it. Don't worry, it's definitely great news. The Madame came here for a visit just now with her doctor. Color has returned to her cheeks, and she sounded full of energy as well. She said she'd like to return to the court to continue hosting the art exhibit. But this time, she'll work with her doctor to exhibit some picture books related to the illness. Of course, Thelxie's fantastic adventures and the guidance therapy will be included in the exhibit as well. She'd like to use her experience to help others. Here, please take this picture book with you. The Madame wanted you to have it. If, at some point in the future, you were to run into someone with similar troubles, she hopes the book would be of use to you. Uh, but this is her son's story, right? Is it really okay to give the book to us? Don't worry, it's just a copy. She still has the original. It's extremely important to her. contributed to something important. Paimon definitely didn't expect the fantasy adventure to be so useful. Paimon was a little worried about how everything would turn out. After all, fantasy is just fantasy. Paimon, do you know what the Madame said? She said that at the moment when she placed the crown on Thelxie's head, she felt like she really saw something beautiful. Her child had returned. And he told her that he loved her. She also said that was when she was finally able to bid farewell to her son. She felt like at that moment, she was healed by some mystical power. And she was filled with courage from head to toe. Oh, really? But could that just be another part of her fantasy? Perhaps. But if fantasy is just fantasy, and the fantasy world is not real, then how could it still grant us these powers that we can continue to use in the real world? But, but what else can it be? A descent of the fairy tale world into the real world. At that 
time, the wondrous fairy tale temporarily became reality and influenced real things in our world. That has to be what happened. You saw it too, didn't you? What? That can't be what happened, right? There's just no way. Wouldn't it be like a miracle if that really happened? Yes, I suppose that would be a miracle. I hope that everyone who's found themselves in a dark place would be able to see something beautiful and experience a miracle for themselves.
apologies. This realm is tr If you ever have... A blade embraces its duty.